times in the heat it I have to celebrate you baby I have to praise you like I
set them free at the break of dawn. So one by one, they were gone. Back at base, bugs in the software. Flash the message, something's out there. Floating in the summer sky. 99 red balloons go by.
shows, I accidentally got my shit together. Would I get a medal or a pat on the back and a little feather? I could stick in my cap, a pin to my shirt, go out in the yard and poke it in the dirt. Or leave it in the woods where it couldn't be found. If it fell over, would it make a sound? And if it did, would it be the sound that you like? Or should I do it over until I get it right? You say everything I know is wrong, so do me a favor and play along for a minute as the rusty gears turn. Don't be alarmed if you smell something burning upstairs. It's a little BB rolling around in a boxcar. See us together. Maybe it wouldn't be hard to explain if I only had a brain. <laughs> Thank you. 
the champion sound. Yeah, yeah Estelle, we about to get down. get down. Who the hottest in the world right now? Just touched down in London town. <laughs> Bet they give me a pound. Tell them put the money in my hand right now. Yes. Set up a motor, we need more seats. We just sold out all the floor seats. Take me on a trip, I'd like to go someday. Take me to New York, I'd love to see LA. I really want to come pick you with you. You'll be my American boy. He said, Hey, sister, it's really, really nice to meet ya. I just met this Viper 7 guy who's just my type. Like the way he's speaking, his confidence is peaking. Don't like his baggy jeans, but I'm I like what's underneath it. And no, I ain't been to MIA. I heard the Cali never rains in New York on a way.
graduating class of 2022's ceremony, if we look to our left, you will see your graduates. So let's welcome our graduates on in.
Class of 2022, you may be seated. Welcome to the graduating class of 2022. I am Ryan Richardson. I'm your very, very proud principal. Uh, for the national anthem, I'll have the seniors from a cappella head on up and take your positions. There they go. Oop. While they do, I want to explain a little graduation cap etiquette. For those of you with um, thick, longer, let's say lustrous hair, you may have worked hard to get that cap to fit in just the right way. So while tradition, we, traditionally we take our caps off, if that's a bit of a problem, graduation cap etiquette allows you to leave it on but I will um, encourage folks in the audience to do so. It has been um, many years since I've been able to describe my hair as thick, long, or lustrous. Are we in position yet? I'm dying up here. Okay, good, good. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national anthem being sung by our award-winning a cappella choir.
first, I would like to acknowledge and thank our board of directors, Libra Ford, Stephen Schrodel, Orlando Perez, Mitzi Bauer, Kathy Way, Tori McVeigh, and Gina Benaloga for all their support of this graduating class. Whether on stage, in the audience, or behind the scenes, thank you. Thank you on behalf of our students for your work. I also would like to thank Superintendent James, Assistant Superintendent Dibley. Thank you for being here tonight. We've ordered some nice weather tonight, of course, for the Rex Putnam graduation, so that is good. You know, I have been an administrator for a number of years now. I believe when I started, my hair was a little thicker, a little more lustrous, but that's okay. When I first, uh, when I, <laughs> excuse me, us administrators, we start to think of each class as another one of our children. Well, class of 22, this is my latest baby. Don't they look good? Don't they look good? My latest baby. And I'll tell you, when we go out, we usually don't all dress the same, but I thought this would be a special occasion, so we're doing that. And just like any good parent, every group, every child is special. I can't pick a favorite, you know. But y'all might be my favorite. I'm just saying. If you tell that to 21, I'm going to deny it. But y'all might be my favorite. It's true that just like any parent who may annoy their other parent friends because they brag a little too much, you guys, I am brag about you all the time. When my colleagues from other buildings check in with me, I quickly find myself being that annoying parent. The other day, the Nelson principal asked me, hey, I'm in a new building. We're going into our second year. What advice do you have? I said, well, let me tell you, you need to get a lot of shelves, lots of shelving, because you're going to have a lot of trophies, at least if you're anything like us. By the way, did you happen to see our award-winning drumline? We just keep winning all the time. Oh, and I don't know if you noticed the uh, choir championship. That was us. He, uh, he was like, yeah, thank you for that advice and, and left. The Clackamas Prince was like, hey, how are you holding up this year? I was like, alas, how can anybody hold up this year? Sorry, we're a little dramatic. We've got a really strong theater program, by the way. <laughs> this year, we sent more thespians to the state thespian championship than any school in our region. Came back with some championships. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you said, if you caught Guys and Dolls earlier this year. It's a very challenging production to put on. Most schools wouldn't touch it. We've got a lot of talent. They were like, I'm glad you're holding up okay. That's good. That's good. Milwaukee principal, she said to me, uh, we had a fire drill today. I was like, oh, that's cool. That's cool. Speaking of drills... Have you seen the state dance competition, the uh, drill down? Yeah, we happen to win the uh, championship. Thank you, Jordan Mitchell Dyer. Uh, you know, you know, uh, uh, left face, right face, in your face, we're champions. Oh, and she started to walk away. I was like, wait, I'm not even done. Our other state qualifying dancer, Valeria Spada, she's amazing. She's been dancing since she was a child. You could say this is her second language, is dance. I like to pretend like I was involved somehow in their talent. <sighs> then I realized, no, it's not her second language. Actually, English and Spanish and Japanese, dance is actually her fourth language. We like to work really hard here in the class of 2022. The Milwaukee principal had left long after she asked me the question. I'm starting to lose principal friends because I brag about y'all too much. The list of stories and people in 22 is extraordinary. There's big stories, there's smaller stories. 
I think of the early graduate, Lillian, who loves to raise bunnies and at the same time has earned her biliteracy a seal, and now she's pl planning to go and travel the world. I think of the incredible student athlete who is an all-state basketball player, all, player of the year, has led our team to the best finish in girls basketball since I have been at Rex Putnam and long before that. Oh, and by the way, she was a starting quarterback in safety. Who does that? <laughs> Maddie Olma does that. And shout out to the whole team for a very fun ride in Corvallis, just saying. I love to win, but it's so much more than just winning with this class. It's things like Katya and Finn maintaining blood drives in times when people weren't gathering, but we needed blood donations more than anything else. It's things like Andrea Vega Zamora, who came to me and said, Mr. Richardson, we need to come together as a community after the loss in Texas because we are stronger together than we are apart. And we held a candlelight vigil led by our students. It's people like Nick Reggiani who put on an incredible behind the scenes work to put together the spirit video at a time when we needed spirit more than ever. At prom, I saw the most inclusive, the most fun, the most participation I have ever seen at a dance. And it was people like Zach Stock and Abby Christensen who were crowned as prom royalty during the dance, and they were among the last people to leave the dance to make sure we had tidied up appropriately. That's the kind of class, that's the kind of people that you all are. And you all danced like nobody was watching, which was a beautiful thing. 22 is a class that just goes out and does the right thing. Whether it be through acts of kindness, or service, or compassion, you do it not because people are watching, you do it when nobody's watching at all. You do it because it's the right thing to do. I love that about this class. And it's been such an honor. It's been such an honor being a very small part of your lives these last four years. When we needed role models, you all stepped up. And I thank you for it. Class of 22, you're kind of my favorite. Just so. Now at this time, I want to acknowledge some special honors from our class of 22. You'll notice some of our students wearing different cords. Each cord represents hard work, dedication to a club, a cause, an academic achievement. There are over 15 cords represented out there. At this time, if you're wearing a green and gold cord or a white cord, would you please stand? These folks, these students, have earned, the green and gold cord has shown that they have earned a 3.5 GPA or higher over the last four years, and the white cord signifies that not only did they earn a 3.5, they also earned an honors diploma, meaning they took five or more college level courses such as IB. Give it up for these academic achievements. Would you now stand if you are wearing a teal cord? The teal cord represents the completion of all required courses in a career and technical education program of study that has been approved by the Oregon Department of Education. In other words, this group of students has spent a lot of time honing in potential career goals over at Sabin Schellenberg and deserve recognition for that. I have a feeling you have a strong sense of where you're headed, so good for you. And at this time, if you are, if you are wearing any other cord, I'd like you to stand. Because the cords that these folks are wearing represent hard work, determination, achievement. 
they have been earned not just this last year, but they have been earned over the course of four years of hard work. They represent a commitment to making our community better. They represent a commitment to making Rex Putnam better. And I thank you for the work that you have done to earn those courts. All right, you can be seated, because now what I'd like to do is honor our salutatorians. The following students went through all four years of high school, earning all A's, except for that one class that nobody likes to talk about, where they got a B. When you hear your name, please stand and face the crowd. Xavier Ashkar, going to Oregon State University, Briggs Preem, off to Carleton College. Blake Swinson, off to the University of Oregon. Andrea Vega Zamora, off to Portland State University. And Dawson Wilson, off to Monmouth College. Next, I'd like to honor our valedictorians. These students earned a perfect 4.0 GPA, which means in all four years of high school, they never made it past the first letter. All they saw were A's. Here we go. My Arts, <laughs> off to Portland State. Wyatt Bell, headed to Clackamas Community College next year. Carson Brudbig, off to the IBEW program as an electrician. Anna Dubinsov is off to Portland State University. Emma Gingrich off to Central Oregon Community College. Lucy Heisey off to Lewis and Clark. Finn Jacobson off to the University of Oregon. Taylor Leap off to George Fox University. Oliver LeMay is off to the University of Oregon. Emily Lozier, off to Oregon State University. Chloe McMacken, off to Evergreen State. Walter McNaughton, also off to Evergreen State. They didn't just coordinate that just now, but there you go. Jordan Mitchell Dyer, off to Leeds. Beckett University. Jamie Norris is off to the University of Washington. Michael O'Dell off to the Oregon State University. Katia Omar o Omarova off to the University of Arizona. Peyton Pickett off to Portland State University. Sila Razel off to Cal Poly Humboldt. Sophia Reglin, off to the University of Portland. Lucy Rose, off to the University of Oregon. Griffin Routley, off to Evergreen State. Jennifer Stinson, off to Clackamas Community College. And Ellie Schweitzer, off to the University of Arizona. Congratulations on the largest valedictorian group that I have seen at Rex Putnam High School. It speaks volumes to everyone's academic achievement that you've been able to navigate the three modes of education during the last four years. So congratulations really to all of our students. At this time, I'm going to invite Josh Alper towards the stage. He's not coming yet. He's not coming yet. He's just working his way towards the stage. Right now, though, you can give a warm welcome to our IB coordinator, Tracy Clark, onto the stage to recognize our IB diploma candidates. Good evening. In 2008, Rex Putnam became an authorized international baccalaureate world school. Our students have the opportunity to take the most academically prestigious and internationally recognized coursework available to high school students anywhere in the world. 
At Rex Putnam, students can pursue IB certificates in individual classes, or they can pursue their international baccalaureate diploma. In the class of 2022, there are six IB diploma candidates. IB diploma candidates, would you please stand right where you are? So I'm gonna ask you to awkwardly stand there and just take this in for a minute, okay? Are you up for it? Okay, savor the moment. To earn an international diploma, each of these candidates took six IB courses over two years. IB English, IB Spanish, IB History, IB Science, IB Math, and then, just to make things interesting, an IB elective, which was any IB class they weren't already taking. Uh, in addition, they took a course in Theory of Knowledge. Each of them completed a minimum of 150 hours of service work and each of them wrote a 4,000-word independent research paper called the Extended Essay. Now, earlier today, I looked to see just how many IB Diploma candidates Rex Putnam has graduated, and there have been 124 before you, which means that the six of you bring our total of IB Diploma candidates to 130. That's definitely worth, worth applauding. You have this shared experience with 130 other Rex Putnam graduates, which is pretty cool. But I would say that you did this program in a unique circumstance. You did it during a pandemic. You did it while quarantined and through Google Classroom. Uh, so I heard something a couple weeks ago. I wasn't sure if I was going to talk about it, but I'm going to see how it floats. So here we go. You might not see the connection right away, but there were these two extraordinary dancers in the 1930s, Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers. They were beautiful. I mean, beautiful dance partners. They were extremely talented. They did these intricate, beautiful dances. Everybody loved watching them. They made movies. It was fabulous. You might be zoning out. You may not know who I'm talking about. I promise your grandparents know who Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire are. Your parents probably know. But there's this saying that goes, you know, uh, Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did. She just did it backwards and in high heels. And so when I think about the experience that you had and what you share with 124 other people, it is a shared experience. You just did it backwards and in high heels, which is pretty cool. We have a tradition of reading your extended essay titles at graduation, and so that is how I will wrap up this evening as we honor you. I see your big eyes looking at me. So when I say your name and I read your title, why don't you take a wave, look at the crowd, and just sort of take this in, because there's one moment where you get this, all right? So here we go. This was their 4,000-word independent research paper. Alexis Avila, an investigation of developing countries and their struggle against United States intervention and imperialism. Avery Clark, Policing in America, an examination of the issues with America's policing and how we can look to other countries to fix it. <laughs> Chloe McMacken, The Maillard Reaction. To what extent does the Maillard Reaction impact the overall flavor of a food dish and that food's nutritional value to humans? Lucy Rose, an examination of Katherine Schweitzer's influence on women's sports following the 1967 Boston Marathon. <laughs> Griffin Routley, to what extent did Stalin's policies between 1927 and 1953 match Marx's core tenets of a communist nation? A 
and Yasmin Torres Romero. 1968 East LA blowouts. To what extent were the East LA blowouts beneficial in improving the education system for Chicano students in East LA? Ladies and gentlemen, the results of their IB assessments and the final determination of whether they've earned their IB diploma are available in July. But this evening, it is my extreme pleasure to present to you all the IB diploma candidates for the class of 2022. You may be seated. Thank you. All right, so at this time, I'm going to excuse our orchestra musicians to take their place. And as they do so, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. So every year, our senior class select a staff speaker for graduation. This year, they have selected one of our best at Rex Putnam. Josh Alper, for years, has been our model UN advisor, tennis coach, speech and debate coach, and of course, teaches many seniors in economics and history. He happens to be a huge Timbers fan, so uh, he's got season tickets here. So I know this is exciting for him for more than just one reason. So please welcome Mr. Josh Alper. All right, let me lower this just a little bit. There we go. Get my speech out. Let me get my glasses on. I can't see. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, good. Okay, I'm sure at some point you have all pondered this deep, life-changing question. If you could have one superpower, what would it be? Superhuman strength or speed? Teleportation? Invisibility? Or maybe flight? I was actually asked this question at a job interview way back in 1989 at a pizza place in Berkeley, California. In some situations, this could be a high-pressure question because it can tell someone a lot about a person, their goals, their insecurities, or just their lack of creativity. Lucky for me, I had a class in high school where we practiced interviews like many of you have had in college and careers. My go-to answer for the superpower question has always been time travel. First, because as a history teacher, I would love to see events and people firsthand that I have studied and taught about over the last 21 years. Like the near misses of the Cold War, the bravery of all the civil rights movements, and the wonder of new technologies and innovations. Second, I would love to go back and follow my family tree and learn more about the people I come from. To see my parents and grandparents and even great-grandparents in their youth would be something special. Wait a second. When I wrote this, it sounded good, but do we really want to see our parents as teenagers? I'm not so sure. Okay, focus. And finally, and I'm being honest here, I would go back and probably bet on some sports games where I already know the outcome, and then I put the winnings in a bank account I could access in the future because I don't think I could travel back to the present with millions of dollars in cash. Maybe it's possible, but I wouldn't want to risk losing it. I am risk-averse by nature. Anyway, you can tell that I have put some thought into time travel. I love time travel stories. What we know about time travel today is that scientifically, it is theoretically possible, but only to go back in time. Even with time travel, the future remains unknown. But it doesn't mean you don't have a say in your future. And this is what I want to talk to you about. Your future depends mostly on you and the choices you'll make. Thank you for the laugh. As far as I know, none of you have superpowers I've mentioned earlier, but it doesn't mean you don't have power. I like to think of power in two ways. One is having the ability to do something, like a skill or talent. For example, please raise your hand every time the following is true for you. You can play an instrument or sing on key. Okay. Change a flat tire. Write basic computer coding. I can't do that. Draw a picture or create a piece of art. Fish or hunt for food. Eh, I could fish, maybe. Speak another language. You are athletically strong at something. Okay? You can grow a vegetable garden. 
You can train an animal. I can't. You can tell a joke. You win regularly at a video game. You're like, I'm the guy. Okay. You can fix an electrical outlet. You perform your job well. And last, you can cook a meal with two or more ingredients. Oh, nice. These and many more are what I call micropowers. And I can tell by all the hands that went up that many of you can do more than one. Now, you might not have realized this, but over the last four years, your teachers have tried to help you develop other micropowers. How to state a clear opinion and back it up with evidence. How to find trustworthy info. How to analyze the written word. How to problem solve. How to appreciate what we are made of and how we work. How to speak another language. The importance of healthy habits. How to understand the past and how to think about your future. This doesn't even cover the more specific skills or talents you worked on at Sabin Schellenberg. We also tried to instill incredibly important values like showing up on time, using appropriate language, you know who I'm talking about, <laughs> cleaning up after yourselves, and saying excuse me, please, and thank you. I'm serious. Saying excuse me, please, and thank you are universal super micropowers. In fact, do me a quick favor. When I say go, please turn to someone and say, excuse me, please, and thank you. But you also need to do it with a smile because that doubles the power. Ready, go. Oh, that's going to open a lot of doors for you. Keep that in mind. All these little powers that you possess or have been working on empower you now. These skills, talents, and abilities are competencies and give you the power to do things you want. The second way I think of power is in making choices that shape the future you want. For the last four years, like all of your K through 12 career, school officials, teachers, and parents have managed a system that limited your choices for the common good. Class times and schedules, required classes, rules and consequences, and support. During your high school years, you have shared common experiences, learning, expectations, and opportunities. As they say, we have tried to level the playing field and give each of you the best chance for a future you want. There were electives to choose, teachers to hope for, and a number of extracurriculars. But there were limits. Most of you made the choice to work within the system. You participated in class, did your work, joined teams in other clubs, or tried to be academically successful. But some of you pushed back tried to undermine or flat out rebelled against some of the constraints. You know who I'm talking about. Nevertheless, you are all here today and you have accomplished a goal that has been 12 years in the making. Regardless of whether your journey was smooth, rough, or a little of both, I think you all should be applauded for navigating some tough issues that made high school even more challenging than normal. And in doing so, you made choices that show you how important your decisions are in life and how tricky they can be. One challenge was obviously COVID and online school. From the wonderful world of Google Meets, Jamboards, and Pear Deck, you were faced with the choice of actually staying awake during the lessons, or even turning on your camera. And this year, many of you started off strong, but soon found yourselves a bit overwhelmed. What did you choose to do about this? Flight, fight, or just freeze? Another challenge with the decision about work. The impact of a minimum wage over $14 is underappreciated. This is crazy money for high school students. My senior year in high school, I earned $3.35 an hour. Yes. By a show of hands, how many of you over the last year and a half have been working at least 20 hours a week? Okay. How about 30 hours a week? How about 40? Yeah. That was a lot of hands raised. As an econ teacher, I would say that many of you behaved very rationally, especially for the immediate reward of money in your pocket. For good and bad, your work choices shaped your experience this year. The last challenge I want to acknowledge is the reality of everything becoming so serious. A pandemic, wildfires, world conflicts, the election, climate change, and the seemingly endless gun violence. It would be dishonest to ignore these real issues because they have impacted you and me. Intolerance, racism, prejudice, hate, scapegoating, and fear-mongering have been around forever and unfortunately have intensified once again. 
So what have you done? What choices have you made? What choices will you continue to make? One thing to keep in mind is that they were all taught. They are not natural, and therefore change is possible. Second, they are all used by people and organizations for their own agendas, their own gain. And this means it is really important for you to understand where you get your information. Just like you would when buying a new car or deciding on a college, you need to do research, go to several sources, and compare and contrast. We've had you work on this skill for four years of high school for a reason. Being an informed citizen with a sharp eye for BS is a power that will help you your whole life. But during all these challenges, there have also been joy and good moments. Assemblies and games, spirit weeks and school performances, and some wild snow days. You've also had Mr. Mixon's community of communication, Miss Maddie's TikTok of the day, Mr. Jarmer's poem of the day, Miss Lockwood's <laughs> Profe Long and Dames, Hola Classe, Mr. Topping Stories, Miss Clark's We Are, Miss Quarles, No Packets, Telly's 80s Music, Miss Clay's I Love You Guys, Mr. Wilson's slight adjustment to this of I Love You in a Healthy Teacher Way, Miss McKenna's Smile, and my whip arounds. Yes, whip around. I started today talking about time travel, and I said that it's not possible to know your future. But at 53 years old, if I could go back in time to my high school graduation, there are a few things I wish I would have known that I want to share with you about your next few years. One, dive in and do stuff. Try things out. Grow your micro powers. This will help you learn what you really like to do and what you're good at. Work will be a central part of your life. Now is the time to start figuring out what you want it to be. Two, you have lots of years ahead of you, decades. What you have done up to now doesn't define you, nor does it predict your future. Think about your choices, their costs and consequences, and take reasonable risks. And remember, you can always change and try something different. Rex Putnam is full of teachers who did other things before teaching. Another one, prepare for managing the difficult stuff. They will come. Bad luck, stress, anxiety, and pressure. Many of you have already been dealing with these, and they are part of life. Start building habits to get you through. Figure out your own tricks and strategies, and get comfortable with learning from failure. And finally, prioritize people who bring you joy and make you better. I can talk all day about the importance of work and choices and goods and services, but I know that at the end of the day, the family and friends that I have chosen to be closest with are the most important parts of my life. Starting tomorrow, you'll find yourself with a lot more freedom and a lot more choices to make. How you deal with this freedom is going to play a huge role in the life you lead. I really appreciate being asked to speak at graduation. It is an honor, and it makes me feel good that enough of you appreciate what I try to do for you. Good luck with your choices, and I hope you get to have a future you want. Thank you. Mr. Alper, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Mr. Alper. And thank you, first row. Getting me back on track. All right. Uh, so next I'd like to invite uh, our student speakers, Yasmin and Chris, to the stage. But before they actually speak, you can start to make your way on over. And while they make their way, it is my pleasure to introduce to you our chamber orchestra. Mr. Kwan started his teaching career seven years ago, which was the same time that many of these students picked up an instrument for the first time in sixth grade. So I hope you enjoy the growth that they have shown. And I hope you hear them today play Sweet for Strings, Movement for Dashing Away by John Rutter.
thank you to the chamber orchestra. Senior band students, it's now your turn to get in positions. While the band prepares for their piece, I'd like to introduce two of the students that I absolutely love to brag about. You can start making your way on up. Yep. Chris O'Malley has a flair for the stage like few others and could have a career in radio based on his performances on the morning announcements. And joining him is your student body president and just one of my favorite people, Yasmin Torres Romero. Supportive friends, proud, hardworking families, and parents, staff of Rex Putnam, look what you did. First, it is such an honor, along with Finn and Yasmin, to give the commencement speech of 2022 to my incomparable graduating classmates. In the time I have today, I'd like to talk about our past and how they define our futures. I don't have all the answers, but I do have a couple things to say. <laughs> what defines you? Do you let people do that, or do you do that yourself? This can mean many things. Your past, your present, your future, some of you maybe grades. At some point in time, they all become the same thing to you. The past, has a lot of effect of things. It can haunt you and prevent you from taking chances. The past is something you can learn from and it can inform your decisions. What it doesn't have to do is dictate what your future looks like. In those moments of feeling like the sky is cracking and you feel the ground breaking and you feel like nothing will happen and like your dreams are shattered, ask yourself this question. Is this worth getting back up for? If that answer is yes, that's when you know you're in the right place. That is the moment strength is born. That is the moment you know your voice is valued and matters where you are. I look out onto all of you and I see you all as those people. Because we all know this year took a lot out of us, but I know I can look at every single person in this crowd and say, you found the courage to keep moving. You survived. You did not let those moments of doubt and despair bring you down or make you give up because they do not define you. So the next time you think about your past and mistakes, and worries that may affect your future or who you are, don't think about the grade you received in this class or the award you received. Think about the work that you put in, the ambition that carried you through that time, because in those moments, you find yourself, you find your resilience, you find you. The next time someone tells you what they think your worth is, Always remember, they don't define you. You define you. Because you are the only person in your life who truly knows your own story. I'd like to quote Angela Bassett and pass on her words of wisdom. When you're told you are not good enough, you tell them, not only am I good enough, I'm more than enough. When they say, send them back home, you tell them, I am home. I am the foundation of what we all call home. When they tell you that you are angry or nasty, you tell them that they're mistaken. This is me. This is me being resolute and standing firmly in my truth. And when they say you're not beautiful, you tell them that you are the descendant of survivors. You are survivors. Yeah. 
Axel Strohschein, Kelly Marchant, and Sarah McNaughton. All examples of those who told me I get the privilege to do that myself and that it's up to me. To them, thank you for that. Thank you for seeing me and for teaching me the importance of dressing for the part, especially for today. Those are my people and my encouragers. Who are yours? Who tells you you can be more than you dreamed? Who reminds you of your worth? Who helps you find the best version of yourself? Remember those people and hold their words close because we all, every one of us, can do anything. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'll show you guys what that box is for in a little bit. Thank you, Chris, and thank you to all students, teachers, staff, and loved ones for attending such an important evening here at Providence Park. Hola, muy buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Yasmin Torres Romero. Les doy las gracias por estar aquí la tarde de hoy para celebrar un día tan especial con la clase de 2022. Dobre večer, kasti blagu da juvas za šusti todvanja zistes zegonja. Ah, that was supposed to mean uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. I'm sorry if I didn't say that right. Um, it is my honor, alongside Finn and Chris, to deliver a commencement speech for such an incredible student body. I am beyond grateful and honored to have shared four years with you, as well as having served as your student body president this year. Think about how far we've come, both individually and as a class. You should all be immensely proud of yourselves because we did it and we did it together. I would like to give a huge shout out to friends, staff, parents, and faculty, as every single one of you has made an impact on the graduates who sit here today. And yes, even teachers who gave out extremely difficult and confound tests. Thanks, Mr. Alper. I cannot express enough gratitude for the Putnam community and those who made it special in the last four years. On behalf of the class of 2022, thank you. As for the class of 2022, we took a win, seriously. Think of all the adversities that we have encountered in the last four years. We managed our classes amidst a pandemic, wildfires, power outages, and worldwide protest, and did it all with a smile on our faces. Despite all of these adversities, we still blossomed and are here present today, ready to take the next big steps in our life. I know the move from high school to your future plans may be daunting and full of uncertainty, but I want you all to keep this in mind. No matter what kind of student you and person you were throughout high school, proud of it or not, this day forward is your chance to start again. You do not have to be the same person you were when you first entered the halls of Putnam. In fact, I believe you shouldn't be. If you regret not having been a part of clubs, participating in school activities, or wish you have earned better grades, or perhaps spoken out more, forget about it. That isn't you anymore. It should be your motivation to not be that same person as you enter the world. I encourage you to become more adventurous, set higher standards for yourself, prioritize your mental health, and test, take risks even when you are afraid. You have the opportunity and choice to establish a new foundation and future for yourself, but it is all up to you. I encourage you to be a nurturing friend, to be a more attentive neighbor, to be an empathetic and mindful leader, and to grow closer with your family. Speaking of family, family is something that I have, oh, something I have cherished ever since I was a little girl. My family has contributed to my education and my growth in ways I'll never truly know. For this reason, I would like to give a huge and special thank you to my amazing parents who are immigrants from Michoacan, Mexico. Woo! 
para mis padres Leonardo Torres y Gloria Romero, quienes emigraron desde México a los Estados Unidos de una joven edad, les quiero agradecer por todo lo que han hecho por ambos de mis hermanos y yo. Ustedes son la razón por la cual yo estoy de pie en este momento. Y todos mis logros son gracias a ustedes y sus esfuerzos. Mami y papi, gracias por todo lo que han hecho por mí. Son las personas a quienes más admiro y aprecio. Los amo. They're truly the best. They're, they're literal goats. I'm being serious. Thank you all for being here tonight and for making this such an unforgettable moment. But before I end, I would like to give a huge shout out to the one and only OG Ryan Richardson, our principal. <laughs> Mr. Richardson, could you join me up on here? Come on, come on, come on. Uh, don't read my speech yet, just like, uh, you know, look away. Okay. As many, as, you, as many of you know, this is Mr. Richardson's last year at Rex Putnam and will be leaving a huge hole in the Putnam community. This doesn't affect me because I'm out too, so it's all good, it's all good. With all seriousness, we couldn't have been more fortunate to have Mr. Richardson as our principal these last four years. He has forever changed Putnam for the better and has unquestionably influenced the lives of many of his students, including myself. He will be greatly missed, but we are more excited, but we are more than excited about his new job opportunity. Mr. Richardson, I made a promise to you years ago, and let's see if you remember this, okay? See, when I was a freshman, I always bugged Mr. Richardson by telling him that he needed to upgrade his shoe game because, well, he dressed a little too principally, and that was not cutting it. I promised him I would give him some nice, I did. I promised him I would give him some nice shoes, but I currently have 79 cents in my bank account, so that was certainly not going to work especially with the rise of inflation. Even with 79 cents, I couldn't break my promise. And thanks to such an amazing staff members, I was able to keep my promise. <clears throat> as Mr. Richardson concludes his time as our principal, I want to make sure he has some heat on his feet as he hands out diplomas for the last time. Wait. Give him, give him a second while he opens it, because I'm going to force him to put them on. Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> That's scary. Oh, oh. Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> um, Mr. Richardson, I also dedicated this song to you. If it plays. Yeah. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. And they stay there. And they stay there. While I'm sipping on this gin, Al Davis said it best, just win, baby, win. All I do is win, 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 no matter what. Got money on my mind, I can never get enough. And every time I step up in the building, everybody hands go up. I don't, I don't. <laughs> Well, you sealed the deal. You're my favorite. There you go. Oh, love y'all. Okay, Finn, you work your way on up to the stage. Uh, I'm going to lace up my sneakers, and we're all going to enjoy um, our state qualifying band, led by director Jeff Wilson. This year, our band had nine musicians placed in the top three at league competition. Uh, Rex Putnam Wind Ensemble is now going to perform a piece written by James Curnow called Toward the Sunrising. In his program notes, the composer says, 
In the Old Testament, history records that when the children of Israel were released from captivity, they set forth and journeyed from wilderness towards the sun rising. This was a momentous occasion that required them to display a strong sense of optimism and to be ready to accept all the opportunities and challenges that lay ahead. Toward the sun rising seeks to capture through music this opportunity, confident spirit that is evident in today's youth as they accept the challenges and opportunities of beginning life's journey traveling toward the sun rising. It is dedicated to teachers and parents who have helped shape, guide, and mold their students and to children's lives and to those young people who have prepared themselves for life's adventure. It sounds like the perfect song for a graduation. Please enjoy Toward the Sun Rising by James Curnow, performed by the Rex Putnam Band.
crease my new shoes. Thank you, Director Wilson and the entire band. Uh, at this time, choir members, you can make your way to your places. And while they do, it's my pleasure to introduce our last speaker of the evening, Mr. Finn Jacobson. Finn has served as our student body president, and this year our spirit commissioner has been an active part of our school's performing arts, leadership programs, IB, and many more. Please welcome Finn Jacobson. Thank you, Richardson. You know, I always think that it's the Oregon weather that makes it rain, but I think it might just be me. So I apologize, it is raining out here if you can't tell. Uh, I want to give one more round of applause to Yasmin and Chris, with whom I'm honored to share this commencement. It is due to your leadership and friendship that I have made it here. Thank you, as well as all of you. I want to take you back in time to the very first day of our freshman year. Scared, excited, nervous, sitting in the gym together for the first time, possibly even the last time that every single one of us was in the same room until right now. Do you remember that day? Because as I talked with members of my class while preparing this speech, I realized that many of you do not. You see, I've never told Mr. Richardson this directly, but on that day, he said something to us that certainly changed the course of my high school experience and my life, and possibly was some of the best advice that you have ever received in your life. He said that in high school, we had two options. We could choose to become people who make something happen, or we could choose to become people who watch things happen. And if I do say so myself, class of 2022, I think that there is a whole lot that we have made happen. <laughs> there is something special about our class. Because in every step that we took through the halls of Rex Putnam, we were making something happen. We populated school activities in high numbers, created and implemented new ideas. Under the leadership of our class, the Earth Club began to compost food. Latinx, BSU, AAPI, and Unity Club all flourished because of our class's commitment to a more equitable world. As my close friend Katya Omarova often points out, we were the first class of underclassmen ever to win the homecoming lip sync in Putnam history. Go 70s. It was members of our class which organized school strikes for the climate as we stood together calling for an end to climate change. When protests broke out across the country following senseless violence, it was our class that came back to Putnam with ideas for systemic changes which ought to be made to create a more welcoming community. The COVID-19 pandemic found us during our sophomore year, and in the face of all of its adversity, we became leading upperclassmen, adjusting to a new normal and maintaining our class unity despite our separation, and academically, as Mr. Richardson said, excelling through three modes of education. My friends, there is no other class that can preach the virtues of flexibility better than we can. We lost a lot of our high school experience, formative years during which, when we were supposed to be planning for this day, for what comes after, we were trapped in our rooms and also trapped in time. For a moment, I want to give thanks to all of the people who worked their, and I'm sorry, worked their asses off to keep us here and to keep us involved during quarantine. Coaches that redefined athleticism, plays and performances from band, choir, and orchestra, which were taken off stage and onto the screen. And classes, which previously depended so much on our in-person interaction, newly available from our bedrooms. Without the mentors which helped us to adapt and navigate, we would not be here. Without the teachers whose heart and soul their students in their classroom were ripped away from them, but they chose every day to continue to impact our lives, we would not be here. 
Without the administration that spent countless sleepless nights figuring out how to make this happen, we would not be here. It is to their credit, but it is also a credit to our resilience. Earlier, Mr. Alper talked about choices. Every single one of us that sits here today chose to make something happen. In the face of endless opportunities to disengage or retreat inwards through global crises and our own personal challenges, we all decided that sitting here today was worth fighting for. You made that choice, and it was the harder one. Thanks, Oregon. So as I stand here today and preach the idea of making something happen, I want it to be clear that all of us sitting here already have. Even if you do not think that you did, even if you didn't make that 4.0 or join clubs or play sports, you made something happen every time you made the choice to step into that school building, to log into Google Meets, to turn in an assignment. On this day, we commemorate together our entrance into the working world. With our education behind us, we have become fully-fledged adults, ready to take on life's challenges. Whatever may be our path, and in the, in the past four years, we have shown that we are a force to be reckoned with. But our entrance into the working world at this very moment is not accidental. Because just as much as we are gathered here today with hope for our futures, pride in our accomplishments, we are also gathered at a time of tragedy, a pivotal moment in our country's history. In light of recent deadly shootings, I must dedicate a portion of my speech to talk about an important issue. For while a pandemic has disrupted and shaped and transformed our education, an even deeper-rooted epidemic has disrupted it much longer, the epidemic of gun violence. For the entirety of our lives and our educations, we have lived under a system in which surviving long enough to sit in these chairs and to toss these up in the air was not guaranteed. Throughout our 13 years of public education, we have learned not only our ABCs, but to hide under desks and in cabinets, to be dead silent. We saw news report after news report, death after death, and lives after lives changed due to senseless violence. Just over three weeks ago, one man in Uvalde, Texas, cut short 19 children's opportunity to make something happen in this world cut short their opportunity to wear a cap and gown, to walk across a stage like this one. Just months before we left middle school, the same thing happened to 17 children in Parkland, to eight in Santa Fe, 20 in Sandy Hook, and to countless others in 240 other incidents since Columbine. I ask, when will this stop happening? Classmates, I do not remind you of these tragedies to be depressing or to dampen this happy, happy ceremony, but to empower you, to remind you that all of us in this stadium today hold a responsibility. As we go our separate ways, some of us to college, some of us to the workforce, and some of us to serve our country, we must ask ourselves how, in the reverence of all of those in our generation whose lives were taken too soon, will we continue to make something happen past graduation? In this country, adulthood is a gift which from so many has been ripped away. And my question for you is, what will you do with that gift? What is important to you and what will you do about it? Is it important to you that we create a safer world for our children? How will you make that happen? Is it important that we maintain compassion for all those with whom we share this earth? How will you make that happen? Is it important to you that you preserve this sacred earth that we have been given? How will you fight to make that happen? How will we take to the next level the idea that love is love so that everybody may find happiness without persecution? How will we undo inequalities so that our forefathers' visions of justice can be fully realized and so that we may truly say that black lives matter. Will we rise to the challenge of unifying 
a polarized and divided country? Will we listen to each other, not push each other away? In all of these questions, my friends, one thing is clear. We can do it. We have demonstrated in these four years that not only can we, but we have made things happen. Our generation will not watch life go by, will not watch things happen for all of those who were lost, for the people that raised us, and for the institutions that put faith into us, for ourselves. We will make something happen. But this compels each and every one of us to put in the work to all make things happen in small ways, wherever we make community and wherever we set in roots. Because as I look into all of your eyes today, I know one thing. With us in it, the world can be a little brighter, a little kinder, a little smarter, and a whole, whole lot better. So class of 2022, Rex Putnam High School, let's make it happen. Thank you, Finn. You have made it happen, and I know you will continue to do so. It is now my pleasure to introduce our state championship winning choir. This year's choir has won numerous awards. It includes four individuals who were top five in state, including Serena Mason, Michael Stilson, Zach Stock, and Ryan Butler. So please enjoy the performance of Slipping Through My Fingers, followed by The Road Home.
Well, I believe this is the moment we have been waiting for. So, to the school board members in attendance tonight, I hereby certify that the graduates before you have successfully completed all the graduation requirements as set forth by the North Clackamas School District and State of Oregon, and to recognize that achievement, we will now issue your diplomas. Now, 
We want to ensure that each student gets recognized, gets a little love. So at Rex Putnam High, <laughs> excuse me, at Re <laughs> getting there. At Rex Putnam High School, our tradition is to utilize the power clap. Now, I know there might be some hoops and hollers along the way, but we want to make sure everybody gets a little something. So we'll practice, and I'll choose a name that might be fitting to our location today. We'll practice the power clap. Is everybody ready? Timber Joe. Well done, everybody. We got a smart audience here. All right, here we go. Assistant principals, Ms. Pinkston, Mr. Costa, take your places. Q pop and circumstance. Come on up and help me with the diplomas. Here we go. to Bell. Carson Brodvig. Anna Dubinsov. Emma Gingrich. Lucy Heisey. Finn Jacobson. Taylor Leap. Oliver LeMay. Emily Lozier. Chloe McMacken. Walter McNaughton. Jordan Mitchell Dyer. Jamie Norris. Michael O'Dell. Katya Omarova. Peyton Pickett. Dela Racel, Sophia Regalin, <clears throat> Ra 
Lucy Rose. Griffin Routley. Jennifer Stinson. Ellie Schweitzer. Xavier Ashkar. Briggs Preem. Blake Swenson. Andrea Vega Zamora. Dawson Wilson. Avery Clark. Yasmin Torres Romero. Josue Chan. Serena Mason. Alexis Avila Ayala. Christopher O'Malley. Samuel Abbe. Giovanni Aguilar. John Allers. Alec Amirakimi. Mariana Ansi. Marie Arela Bustos. Maria Arrolo del Barrio. Lizette Avila Ayala. Riley Bader. Jerica Baker. Jutem Baker. Luke Balu. Miles Barton. Peyton Bakahi McKay. <laughs> Melanie Betts. <laughs> Ashlyn Bigby. <laughs> Abigail Filby. Anthony Botaraga. Coda Bowen. Amber Briones.
Jackson Brown. Yasmin Burley Rojas. Frederick Burns. Cole Busick. Ryan Butler. Peyton Byers. Christian Kamal Petch. Osvaldo Cabrera Aviso. Edgar Cabrera Barrera. Sadie Campbell. Yahida Cadenas Pacheco. Ella Carrasco. Joey Serda. Alicia Chamberlain. Nia Joe. William Clark. Maria Contreras. Giovanni Correa Ibarra. Michelle Cortez Gonzalez. Gabriel Counts. Miranda Coy. Caitlin Coyle. Jason Crow. Mason Cruz. Miranda Quiris Gonzalez. Esme Cyphers. Maria Delap. Ariel De La Vega. Skylar Dory. Margaret Dorr. Aaron Durham. Isabella Elisares. Noelia Akiwa Meza. Gabriel Erbelding. Victoria Erbelding.
Valeria Espadas. Isaac Esser. Aspen Farmer. Micaiah Fender. Lucy Fisher. Jesse Fleischman. Kifeda Ford. Noah Galbraith. Giselle Garcia. Jonah Geiger. Abigail Getman. Andrew Goad. Marissa Goad. Marissa Goldstein. Carlos Gomez. Isabel Gonzalez Vasquez. Isela Gonzalez Vasquez. Drew Greco. <laughs> Megan Grimsrud. Brian Gitron. Mark Gutierrez. David Hanks. Ariana Easton Hanley. Abram Harrell. Cameron Hartnell. Chase Harvey. Jaden Hayes. Sydney Hayes. Kennedy Hedberg. Akaya Hegland. Christina Hellyer. Kia Hernandez. Julian Herrera Alfaro. Noah Hicks. James Hodges.
Ashton Hooper. Trenton Hove. Aiden Hoyer. Connor Hutchcraft. Yuka Imai. Maria Imus. Kirsten Yan. L. Johnson. Carson Jones. Corey Jones. Kyler Kafori. Anna Marie Keller. Caden Keller. Emmeline Chemnitz. Jordan Kimelin Aguilar. Erickson Kemption. Alina Kurop Yatnikova. Cadence Lake. Brighton Lavender. Oliver Layton. Genevieve Leland. Andrew Lemus. Pablo Leon. Alan Lopez. Abigail Lozier. Andrew Lund. Ashley Martin. Liam Martin. Amanda McClements. Dylan McClure. Shane McIntosh.
Giovanni Miliaccio. Eva Miletic. Ambrosia Millard. Cooper Milne. Lily Mitchell Blau. Salvador Mondragon. Adele Monty. Wyatt Moya. Marike Naritz. <laughs> Maddox Nath. Belen Negrete Flores. Blaine Nelson. Jacob Newman. Walker Odell. Maddie Almer. Connor O'Neill. Jackson O'Neill. Wesley Paget, Jared Pamphil, Jordan Pamphil, Anthony Pankratov. Madison Pearson. Evelyn Perez Aguilar. Juliana Peterson. Devin Philbrick. Andres Pina Cordova. Piper Pratt. Andrew Prouse. Oliver Provost. Diego Quintanilla. McCall Ragland. Nicholas Reggiani. Eve Regeer.
Lawrence Riddle. Isaac Rivera. Lynette Rivera. Jimena Rivera. Matthew Rogers. Ismail Rodriguez. Kiave Rodriguez. <laughs> Natasha Rodriguez. <laughs> Tamara Rodriguez. Victoria Rodriguez Guardiola. Nicholas Romhilt. Jake Rolfing. Liam Rope. Chase Ruley. Corbin Ryan. Eric Salgado. Jackson Salisbury. Vinny Salvion. Caden Samuels. Jesus Sanchez. Aaron Ray Sanchez Martinez. Grant Sanders. Wyatt Sanders. Jenna Sanatel. Lexi Sanatel. Gabriel Saya. Aiden Schneider. Matthew Schweinsberg. Vladislav Sonenko. Isaiah Senga Hansen. Isabella Serradel. Ash Sheikh. Megan Shamblin. Matthew Stefan. <laughs> A 
Alex Stilson. Zach Lamar Stock. Chris Stoeth. Atticus Stott. Cody Stoll. Colby Strauss. Ray Titingfong. Cody Taylor. Taylor Turner. Addison Vaca. Anton Vatlev. Alexia Via. Kaya Via. Jack Via Lopez. Jaylee Via Toro. Dylan Wagner. Nicholas Watson. Isabella White. Esme Wilsgut. Lacey Wolcott. Kralis Wardle. Ben Zong. Ruby Landstrom. Victoria Smith Fleek. Ladies and gentlemen, your class of 2022. As they make their way back to their seats, we'll take one more look down memory lane. At this time, our senior class officers can come on up to the stage. 
While they're making their way all the way around, if you missed it when you came in, let's take one more look down memory lane at the senior slideshow. class of 22. Are you guys ready to wrap this up? Yeah. Yeah. Um, hello, my name is Mai Arts and I am this year's senior class president. Woo! My name is Serena Mason and my name is Osoi Chan and I am your, I'm your, <laughs> your senior class vice president. I'm Alexis, and I'm your senior class treasurer. It was our pleasure to serve alongside Alexis and Josue this year. They are so, so amazing. Um, I would just like to give a huge thanks to all of those that have helped us get through these very rough four years. From parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, and friends, we've all made it here tonight. And I am so proud of each and every one of you. We would also like to acknowledge the hard work that all of our teachers put in these last four years. You all helped make distance learning as good as distance learning could be. All right, graduating class of 22. Please join us in the ceremonial turning of our tassels from right to left. All right, three, two, one. Congratulations, we're graduating! All right, so at this time, first of all, directions for you, seniors. If you see a hat, that's not yours, pick it up, we'll sort it out when we get out there. I'd like to excuse our staff, and I want to explain a little tradition. Four years ago, this group of students walked into Rex Putnam doors for the first time, and they were greeted by our staff going through an honor cordon, a tunnel of staff clapping them in to Rex Putnam High School, and we are going to clap you out as you graduate and move on to the world. So please wait for staff there. Families, we're gonna ask that after the seniors leave, after the final senior has left 
you can meet them right out on uh, 18th Street. We've got that closed up, so we have some time to connect with families right out on 18th Street. Let's clap them out. Congratulations to the class of 2022. It has been an absolute pleasure. So we're gonna go row, one row at a time. One row at a time, here we go.
out. Play on, play that. Play on, play that. Yo, Lord, drop the verse. It's going down, fade the cleverly. My home has got grasshopper creations. Bump like acne, no doubt. Put it down, never slouch. As long as my credit can vouch the dog, couldn't get you straight up. Tell me who can stop when rookies making moves, attracting honeys like a magnet. Giving them ear gasms with my mellow accent. Still moving this flavor with my home is muck and BD, the original rum shaker. Sure Shut get down, good lord. Baby, got you moving all over town. Crazy biz won't play around, cover much ground, she got game by the pound. Getting paid is a forte, each and every day, true clear way. Well, I can't get her out of my mind, wow. I think about the girl all the time. Wow. East side to the west side, pushing fat rides, and it's no surprise. She's got stacks in the stash, I stacking up the cash. Fast when it comes to the gas By no means that red She's on, she's gotta have it Well baby you're a perfect teen I wanna get in Can I get down so I can win I like the way you work it No diggity Got to bag it up I like the way you work it No diggity Got to bag it up I like the way you work it No diggity Got to bag it up I like the way you work it, no diggity, got to bag it up. Hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all, hey y'all. 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 No diggity, I'm gonna pop some tags. Only got twenty dollars in my pocket. I'm like, what's up? I'm down with Daryl Scott. Straight picking in these duds from the thrift shop. Ice on my cabin. It's so dang frosty. Folks like dying at a coco honky. Like literally, y'all, I need central heat. But that don't stop me rocking gators on my feet. I'll be kicking and picking it with straw on my dome till diggers like, and then we play it on home. I'm gonna pop some tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. I'm mama hunting, looking for a come up. This is drinking awesome. I'm gonna pop some tags. Only got $20 in my pocket. I'm mama hunting, looking for a come up. This is drinking awesome. shop down the road I wear your granddad's clothes I look incredible in this big old coat from at the shop down the road I'm gonna pop some tags only got twenty dollars in my pocket I'm a I'm hunting looking for a come up this is thinking awesome I'm gonna pop some tags only got twenty dollars in my pocket I'm a I'm hunting Looking for a come up, this is thinking awesome. Yearns for you and days that used to be. 